once again you are highly welcome to this program ask your question our father and our god the immortal and invisible god the only wise god there is no any other wise god than you father you are the most excellency of jacob the covenant keeping god the answer to all problems father you elude is the reason why we have gathered because we don't want to make mistake in life father there are many people that have died out of ignorance but you have made us to understand that ignorance will not be an excuse on the last day therefore eternal father here we are your children we have come to know the truth we have come my father that we may learn for you holy spirit we ask you to teach us your word holy spirit we ask you to answer every question that we come this evening holy spirit we ask you mercy for jesus come and answer the questions by yourself lord because i am not a teacher i know nothing holy spirit you are a perfect master and you are in a perfect position to answer your children answer them holy ghost that at the end my father your name will be glorified lord we silent every distraction we silent every confusion spirit that want to confuse your children lord we hold ban all the evil activities all the agent from the pit of hell that they will arrest them right now in the name of jesus you are welcome holy ghost holy spirit we welcome your presence and we come against every network distraction lord we silence them right now all the hindrance on facebook that we hinder people not to pay attention to this program lord let the fire of the lord consume all the agent of the enemy all the enemy of progress enemy of the gospel enemy of righteousness lord silent them this evening that at the end we have the cause to rejoice blessed be the holy name lord for in jesus name we have prayed praise the lord hallelujah you are highly welcome the people on facebook the people on zoom the people out there i want to bless god for giving us a privilege like this to come on this program ask your question and i believe that uh, many people has been asking why this program is not on again uh by the help of the lord we have we have started again and i bless the lord you and i are on this program this evening i want to tell you that uh, if you have your question please we are going to take question one after the other I want you to invite your friends, invite your brothers, invite your sisters, so that uh, they will hear the answer. Maybe they have question similar to the question people are going to be asking this evening. By the moment that uh, you you connect them and they hear the other people question i believe they will benefit on the answer that will be given to those questions by the grace of god as you do that 
God bless you. You share the message on Facebook. You invite them. If you have any question, the people on Facebook, I believe you can see our direct line. You can call that line direct. Otherwise, you can uh, connect to the Zoom. Praise the Lord. Amen. I want to first of all start if there is any question on the Zoom. Yes. Okay. Please. As you ask, as you are about to ask question, you tell us where you are calling from. Your name, please, is very, very important. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. My name is uh, Macy. I'm calling from Italy. I'm speaking from Italy. Okay. Uh, I want to ask uh, this question. My question is this: Can uh, important let me say it's important person in church you ask him or her something in the church he or she lie immediately right away in, in church i don't know Vanya, i don't know where you understand my question yes 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 whether so if, it, to, I, if it is possible for yes. an important person in the church, you yes. ask him or her question instantly, he lied to you, whether if yes. it is acceptable or not. Yes. Is that not your question? Yes, it's my question. Okay. God bless you. Our, bless sis you our sister, she's asking if, he, if it is possible for a real christian to lie in the church not to even to talk of outside the church is a question to everybody if you have answer to that question you can uh, you can tell us anybody that have answer to that question anybody that want to answer that question Okay. God bless you. Any other person? Let there be no noise. Any any other person that want to answer her? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, but for me, uh, you know, you can't just say someone is lying. I mean, how do you know that the person is lying? The, the sister that asked the question, she had the reason why she asked the question. Uh, what we need to do is to give her the simple answer because of, uh, I believe before the person that asked the question, asked that question, there is a reason. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. What was the question? I can... The question is that uh, a real born and gay Christian in church, can that person, you ask the person a question, instantly the person is lying. Is it acceptable? It's not acceptable. When, 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 sorry to come in like that. I know we are all working, like we are not perfect, but we are working towards perfection. As a reborn again, that you know that yes, you are you really dedicate your life totally to God. <laughs> Sorry. Let's, let that so, be no noise somebody, there, please. Somebody asks you a question. At least, like seeing you in the church, they know you are you are a born again Christian. That everybody's, you know, they might be looking up to you, and this person is different. He have changed, or she have changed his way. When they ask you a question, for you to like give the person a direct answer. If you don't know the thing, don't say it. Uh -huh. Don't say it. Don't lie. It's 
not good for the person to lie that they are looking onto you as a reborn again Christian. So give it the same, uh, giving somebody answer or they ask you question, you are telling that person like meaning you still need to work on yourself. I know we are all working on, on ourselves. That person really need to search him or herself and work on that aspect of lying. So yeah. if you don't know something, you, you say, I don't know my sister, I don't want to lie. Or my brother, sorry, I need to, you know, confirm. I don't want to lie. God, Simple. God bless you. Can we, can we turn to our Bible in the book of uh, Revelation, chapter 22? From verse 12 to 15. Can we read there? We go to the Bible to confirm the word of God is true. Are we there? Where's that? Revelation chapter 22, verse 12 to 15. Who is there? Yeah, go ahead, behold, go ahead. Okay, so as thou also them that hold no the doctrine of Revelation chapter 22, verse 22. 12 to 15. Okay. Nobody's there. I'm there, sir. And behold, is it there? And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me. To give every man according to his work shall be. Is it there, sir? Yes, go ahead. To... Okay. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Better are they that do his commandment, that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter into the gate into the city. For, for without our dogs and suck, suck, suck our and warmonger and murderers and adultery and whosoever loved and make it a lie. Okay. I, Jesus. Okay. Stop there. You can see. Yeah. There's such people that lie that make it lie. Such people, no murderer, neither fornicator, or a liar. Whether you are the head of the church or not, we make heaven. Are you hearing me? The sister that asked the question. I want yeah, you to know that no liar will go to heaven. Is it something very, very important that we must look into? Whether if the person, if you find out that a person lied to you, that one does not mean that you should leave the church. The reason why is this. Because today, Satan is fighting the truth. Satan is fighting the church. Satan don't want you to be among the place where truth be preached. Mm -hmm. Satan is fighting to make sure that church it will poison your heart. That is what Satan is working to do. But we must discipline our mind. If you find out somebody lied to you in the church, is somebody you don't expect it to lie to you. What do you need to do? If you find out that uh, you cannot you cannot correct the person, look for somebody who can talk to that person. Otherwise, you can go and meet the person. Brother, there are some people, I used to tell you people, there are some crafty people, if they are talking to me, they will be lying to me. Instantly, the spirit will tell me this person is lied to me. But I didn't, I'm not, uh, I know that uh, because now that I know that person is lying to me, I will hate that person. No, because I know that that person, it may be important person in church, it may be a worker, it may be a dicky, but that person is what is amateur. Do you hear what I said? Eh? The person is what is amateur. Such a person will die and go to hell. If you want, I can show you many places in the Bible for us to confirm that it is not acceptable for a true child of God to tell her. That shall not tell her. Remember, 
is a one is is, is the is that is in the commandment of God. There shall not lie. It is it is is forbid as a child of God to tell lie. And we must not what we must not tell lie. We must not. Don't say because. You see other people are telling lies now. You want to join them. Simply mean you are on your way to where? To hell. You are on your way. You may have the power to move mountain. Even though you have 99.9, .9, does not qualify you. You are going to heaven. This is something we must, we must know. I pray God of heaven will help us in this time. That is my prayer. Praise the Lord. Amen. You can go and read in the book of, um, because of the time, we are not going because of uh, we have uh, many questions to answer. We can go and read 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9. Galatians chapter 5, verse 19. Colossians chapter 3, verse 6. We can go and read Philippians chapter 2. Uh, Philippians chapter 3, sorry. Philippians chapter 3, verse, Philippians chapter 3, verse 2. You can go and read there. You will see all those things that a liar will go to hell. I pray God will help us not to tell a lie. God will help us. Do you know that it is the same thing that the people that are, the people that are in, that, that, that used to go to commune to go and tell a lie. I don't have husband. Of we that you have husband. I don't have husband. And you have husband, you will go and lie to them to tell her. On Sunday, you will come to church, come and join me, sing hallelujah. Jehovah Nisi Hadon me where you are rolling on the ground. You are rolling on the ground. You are rolling on the ground. You are jumping up. That Jehovah Nisi have remember you. Hey, I just went to Komu. Hey, God remember me. You didn't tell them in church how you lie. You didn't tell them that in the church that you tell lie in common that you don't have husband. Friend, I want to tell you all these are error. Whether small lie or big lie, lie is what is lie. Friends, let's be careful. I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, I believe you have got your answer. God bless you. We move to the next question. The next question. Any other person? Yes, sir. Okay. About, the, about this. Uh, please, name. your name and where you are calling from, please. My name is Elizabeth, calling from Germany. God bless you. Thank you. Uh, because uh, before. Uh, Coming to this group, I used to wear trousers, and most of my clothes they are all trousers. So, and these trousers, I bought them with a lot of money. So, some I I have given some out, but I still keep some. Even my weapon, I have a lot of human hair. I bought them with expensive, and I really want to be convinced that, um, because. Sometimes I'm I even in the cold. There, this is in this country. There is a lot of cold here. And I cannot just be wearing scared. Even a few few months, I I start wearing scared. I have cold. I was having knee problem, my legs because of the cold. So I'm not used to scared. I'm always used to trousers. Okay. And they say trousers wearing trousers is a sin. So I want to be convinced it's true. And my and fixing and making your hair as well. Okay. God bless you. I'm really convinced. I don't want anyone to just say. It. I want to be convinced that it's the Bible. Okay. I want to read it. I want to be sure. Okay. Okay. Um, I want to thank God for that great and wonderful question. Uh, because sometimes you can still get a job and they are wearing trousers. Like maybe some. Uh, in, 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 this this is a this is a job where they will provide this your your uniform for you and it's trousers, and you need a job. And how can you you would would, would, would you would you? Nice job because it's trousers and which you don't have any other way to get another job. And you can't tell them that you won't you won't wear a trouser you want to put on skirt. Maybe in, in the group where they, they are fifteen or ten, everyone is wearing trousers, you are there with skirts. 
and I don't know. Okay, just just hold your peace, and then by the grace of God, you will get your answer in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, anybody that have answer to that question, our sister, she's asking. Our sister, she first of all analyzed to us that uh, before she joined this group, she have. She bought a lot of trousers with a lot of money, even many women here. But now she wants to really find out, she wants to really know the truth, she wants to have a great conviction. That is how the question of our sister. Anybody that want to answer her? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I pray we make her hear, I not hear her more. <laughs> Praise the Lord. By uh, the grace of God. Uh, if you know, you have to thank God that you are in this group and you are hearing the word of God every day. I'm not going to quote a Bible with you because I know our brother will give you the right answer, but I want to tell you this. <clears throat> you are listening to the, the preaching every day and, you know, I believe so. Uh, the spirit of God is inside of you and... How does your conscience tell you every day when you hear the word of God, when you're hearing about wearing trousers, has your conscience, I, 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 I mean, has, have your conscience ever smiled you one day since you've been hearing the word of God? Mm, yes, even um, um, a week ago, uh, where, where I live now, most of my clothes are not here. So the, the few trousers I have, I gave it out. So and I have a party that I will be going this weekend. So I went to I went I went to shop and I get a, this a trouser. It's on the, the very tight one. This loose trouser is complete. I bought the I bought the complete uh, clothes. When I take it to my house, like a day, even when at that night I was sleeping, I was being worried. Ah, you giving your trousers out already? Why did you go and buy another one? So I was worried, I was thinking, I was like, ah, maybe something will happen now. And, you know, I was just being worried. I was not to myself. So I, even I, I called my friend that we went together, like, I want to return this trouser. I said, but it didn't look like trouser. It's, it's like scared, it's, it's full. I was trying to convince myself, no, as far as trouser, I, I, I look at this it. trouser, but even if it looks like scared, but it's trousers, I will return it to get it scared. So the next day I returned the trouser to, to get scared. But I'm still not convinced. I want to be really, because I have a lot of trousers. I have all my clothes, they are trousers, all, all of them. Yeah, all. when your conscience is smiting you like that, that means it's the spirit of God that is telling you that what you're doing is not good, you understand? Because I don't want to tell you that, okay, because you're hearing the word of God, go and throw it away, go and do no. We can, we, you can only hear the word of God, but it's the Holy Spirit that will do the work because I am talking from experience, you get it? Because me, I, am, I never believed that I will, I will be putting on skirt, I will be dressing like this, but it, it was done by the Holy Spirit. That was the reason why, that is the reason why I ask you the question, you get it? So if your conscience, whenever you put on, put on trousers and your conscience... God bless you, brother David. Sister, you need to... You need to work on it. You need to give it away. No matter what it costs you, you need to give it away because you don't know what is going to happen next. You get it? Because, some, because sometimes when I put on skirt, I look very older than my age. I, I look very, <laughs> like I see that this thing is not, it didn't suit me, you know? It's not good on that, me. That is the pit. That is, the, 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 that is the life from the pit of hell. Because the, what you uh, said to my experience, I understood you. Because the devil was also deceiving me that, oh, it is too cold. It is, I try, after throwing away my trousers, that, oh, it is too cold. But I prayed to God. I said, Lord, I don't want to go back to my vomit. You get it? Even when I was still putting on trousers, I still feel the cold. You get it? So there is this sock you will wear that is up to your, 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 your hips. You get it? So whenever you're feeling cold, you can wear that sock. Stick one. They have thick one. They have light one. There's a way God must give you a way out of it. People have been complaining before, but when we are able to explain to them, they don't feel the cold anymore. Sometimes when I even dress up like this, I'll be feeling warm inside the inside winter. That is the grace of God. So all those things that the devil is bringing to your mind, he just to deceive you the more. So I think let our brother take over. Praise the Lord. 
Hallelujah. I want to bless God for this wonderful evening. And I know people have been shouting. People have been saying, Sir, why is it that this program, you stop this program? But I want to tell you that devil is a bastard. Yes. You that are out there on Facebook, invite your friends. Share the program on those platforms you 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 are you are into those a uh, uh, blog you belongs to why do you need to share this message it's not because of me because some people are dying today going to hell because of error i want you to save somebody's life i want yes. you to save his soul let them know the truth because the bible say you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free you hear the sister the sister the sister spend money spend thousands of error buying trouser and buying a, a woman hair but she never know the precaution of all those things but does the bible have the answer to all those things yes the bible have answer the bible have answer to all those questions many women today pastors women have confused they have confused because of ignorance you can give what you don't have it is what you have you can give how can a blind man lead a blind man? How can a dead person lead a dead person? It's not possible. It's only it's somebody who is alive that can give life to another person. My friend, I want to tell you, the Bible is true. All you just need to do this evening, run with me to the Bible so that we we'll really look into the Bible to really find out whether wearing trouser is acceptable by God or not. In the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22. Let's first of all start in Deuteronomy, chapter 22. Deuteronomy, chapter 22, verse 5. What does it say? Deuteronomy 22. Woman shall not wear that which pertained unto a man, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that do so are uh, abomination unto the Lord that God. Yes, man the world. A woman shall not a woman shall not wear wear that which partaker to a man. But today you can see today in the world Satan has blindfold our women from then not to know, from then not to see the Bible. Now they have now what what are they doing in this scripture where we read? They change the scripture, they tell them, they tell the women, women have their own, white men have their own. Is that true? No. Friend, go and check the people, the women, our sisters, like the Boras in the Bible, like all these people in the Bible, Elizabeth. Go and check the way they dress in the Bible. If you want to check them, you can go to the YouTube to watch about them, those old mothers years ago that, are, that live before us. Friends, I want to tell you, God, our Lord, excuse, uh, it was because of code. That is why I wear trousers. I will not be an excuse of a hair. Oh. Do you hear me? Do you hear what I said? It's because of code. It will not be an excuse in where? In her. I'm telling you the truth. Let's go to the Bible to see. In the book of uh, 1 Timothy chapter 2. 1 Timothy chapter 2. Let's read something there. 1 Timothy chapter 2. Have something to tell us again. 1 Timothy chapter 2. Let's see who is calling. 1 Timothy. The people on, on Facebook. You are free to call us. On the line, you are saying that if you have any question or any contribution, you are free to call us on WhatsApp. It's free. We will answer your call. First Timothy chapter 2, verse 9. Are we there? In yes. like manner also, that women adore themselves in modest apparel, with shame fierceness and sobriety, not with braided hair or gold or pears or costly array, you can mark that word. Mark that word. Mark the scripture. First Timothy chapter 2, verse 9. Mark the word. In like, in like what? Manner also. That we may do what? Adore their self. In what? In modest apparel. Mark the word. 
in a different dressing, decent dressing. Not what, not like what, all these things that the pastor's wife are doing. Have you not seen some pastor's, uh, pastor's uh, wife? What are they doing? They paint their head with what? With gold, with silver. Is it? Are you not seeing it there? It said what? Not what? Not painting them with what? With gold? But today, what is happening in the church? Pastor's wife, we go to the market to go and buy them to paint their hair. But let me first of all focus on you to tell you about uh, about wearing trousers, the precaution of wearing trousers. What is the precaution of wearing trousers? You wear trousers, you tie it yourself. What are you doing? You tie it yourself, a man look at look after you and lost after you. What happened? You have sent a soul to her. Remember, remember the word of Jesus Christ. That if if you look after a woman, what have you done? What have you done? You the man have already committed what immorality. immorality. And you that have done that, what happened? You have what you have killed a soul, you have sent a soul to her. And what happened? The punishment that followed the person, and the same punishment will follow you. That what you make yourself available. To what? For that man to go to hell. And you, if you don't repent, the same way, you will follow the road that the man follow. Because of that, because of that, the Lord expected you and I to what? To dress in a decent way. A decent way as a woman, you dress proper so that what? A man will not look after you and lost. I want to tell you, let's see somebody. We have a contribution. Let me see if I can put the person on. Just hold on. Or somebody want to contribute? Because I want to hear contribution. If the person pick, okay, the person is calling before. Maybe the network of the person is bad. Okay, I want to contribute, please. Okay, okay, please. If you can connect on the Zoom, you can open your mind on Zoom. Open your mind on Zoom. Sister, want to contribute? We need to hear her. Open your mind on Zoom. Please let there be no noise. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, hello, good evening, sir. Good evening. Issue on good evening, please. The one on Zoom, hold on first. The one on phone, go ahead. Good evening. Good evening, sir. Yes, God bless you. God bless you, sir. It's me, Sister Precious. Sister Precious, okay. You are welcome. Yeah, I'm calling from Germany. Your German line is not going. So I'm calling with the Italy line. Yes, my Jamie number is my Jamie phone is not with me for now. Go ahead, go ahead. Okay, because I have a, a, a question that I want to ask. Okay, if you have a question, go ahead. But you will treat the first one first. What is your question, please? My question is that I want to know if we are English, if uh, our because. The way the scripture is going these days, you understand? Mm. So, to my own understanding, because when you are saying women should not put on trousers, people will be telling you that it's a self-righteousness. You understand? Yes. But it's in the scripture that a man should not put, a woman should not put on what pertaining to a man. Okay. And a man should not put on what pertaining to a woman. Okay. In the scripture, uh, Deuteronomy, you understand me? Yeah. But they will tell you that it doesn't matter that uh, you are just doing uh, holy, holy. I too know you are preaching what you don't know. You don't know anything about the scripture. Okay. You know, or uh, maybe when you tie your hair, you are tying your hair, not putting on trousers, not putting on earring or makeup, all those things. They will tell you that it's uh, self righteousness. Okay. That uh, uh, Old Testament, we are we are under a, a grace. That we are not under law. Okay. 
you understand? Yeah. And I still not say yes, I understand that even though we are under grace, it doesn't mean that Old Testament, they will tell you that it's in Old Testament. They told me it's the Old Testament. So we mean because I not I will not answer that. Old Testament and New Testament all is scripture. Okay. You understand? Yeah. Okay. What is what is your what is your question? What is your question now? So my question is that are we English? Because we are not English, as we are saying it that they will say because of Europe. The Euro people they never go away from their tradition. Are we English? I want to know. Okay. We are um, English. Yeah, we are going to we are Hebrew. We are going to give you a simple answer about that. When the we are still on the matter, uh let uh, our sister if you can wait online. Just be with us online by the grace of God. After this uh, first question, I'm going to address that uh, that uh, this question. Uh, after we are through with this uh, first question, we are we are treating them. Okay. Yes, we are going to attend to that. Um, please go ahead. Yeah, we yeah. No problem. No problem. Don't just a moment, sister. Please go ahead from Zoom. God bless you. Um, sorry. Good evening, everybody. Um, God's love. Um, no. I've seen the questions. I've listened to the questions. I'm sorry about my voice. It's a little bit down. Um, there was a time we had a meeting in the church with our, with our drama coordinator. So we usually do costumes, you know, when dressing up and... You know, when you're acting, you try to portray the character. You try to portray what you're acting. So someone asked a question there. And then that there was a time they were acting a drama and the role that needed to be played, the sister needs to put on trouser. And when they wanted to do it in the church, the pastor was against it. So he was now asking that if we can use other stuff to portray roles, why not us do this as well? So the pastor answered and said that he had prayed concerning that. And the thing God has not permitted him to use is that of the trouser. And he asked the question, and people were like saying, the Bible, the Bible, but the Bible did not really mention trouser Trou as the attire that pertains to a man. I'm sorry, can you hear me? Yeah, we are with yeah. you. Okay, now the Bible did not actually mention trouser as the attire that pertains to men or gown or whatsoever. I just said a woman should not put an that which pertains to a man. And that so is the Bible trying to say the attire there is a man. And he said that, okay, if people don't even actually want to believe the Bible, then nature itself condemns a woman putting on trouser. Nature on its own condemns a woman putting on trousers. Now, if, for example, now you're traveling on the road and maybe by bus, then the driver stops and said that, um, I'm going to permit everybody to come down here. If you're pressed and you need to ease yourself, you come down and do it now. And you're on the roadside. What will happen? A, a man on trouser, of course, on trouser, we just easily is himself but a lady in trouser a lady putting on trouser a lady in trouser will not be able to do that a lady in skirts will ease herself freely on the road or person in gown or trouser i'm um, sorry or wrapper but a lady in trousers you have to disgrace yourself on the road before you can ease yourself that's to tell you that Trouser is naturally not made for a lady i don't know if with my suggestion i've been able to make any sense here yeah. praise the lord hallelujah yeah. go ahead it's making sense please yeah. okay so at least with this one now we can see that not only the bible is saying this nature on its own is condemning a lady wearing trouser they'll tell you lady trouser is for a lady but if you want okay let's see this now if you go to a public toilet where they demarcated trouser um, male toilet from female toilet you see them they will put this description and um, this um emoji or what of the man of the male toilet is showing indicating he's putting on trousers but that of a lady as well you see them scared because if you put trousers there they will mistake it for a male to restroom so this is just it that nature itself on his own has condemned it that trouser is not naturally made for women praise the lord hallelujah <laughs> God bless you, sir. Just let me uh, say this, sir. Just one minute. You know, when you put on trousers, for example, 
it shows all your figures. But when you put on the skirt, it's not like that. All your figures, it shows all your figures that are, you know, because that is when men begin to lust after women. You get it? So, when you wear skirt, it doesn't show like that. I know that the skirt, some skirt, is, some skirt, also the, some girls that wear some skirt that is very tight, you know, or, or in the name of I want to wear skirt, now we are not putting on trousers, they will go and wear one short skirt, or a skirt that is very tight. There's a way that, she, that, that you know, that, that call it, uh, 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 I don't know, I don't know what the name, the name to give, they call it. It is very tight, that will be showing your figures as, as well. You get it. So, trouser of a thing is really, really wrong. As our sister said, that nature itself condemns it. God bless you. God bless you. And God bless uh, the answer you all gave. And uh, they are so wonderful. Uh, my dear sister, I want to tell you, as a child of God, you don't need to wear trouser. Whether cold. Now, let me ask a question. Now we are in Europe. You can never say because of the difficult you are seeing in Europe, you want to disobey the Lord. Am I right? Yes, sir. Hello. Yes, sir. Am I right? Yes, sir. Okay. The... Yes, sir. Uh, it's me, Brother David. Yeah, Brother David, God bless you. Just hold on. Don't end it. Just hold on. I will give you a minute now to talk. Just a moment. Now you can say you are, you are in Europe, no matter the difficult in Europe. No matter the cold, no matter the sun that is shining in Europe, you must obey the what? The the, the government the law. Am I right? You will yes, obey yes. them. You never disobey them. If they find out whether cold or summer that you disobey them, what happened? They will send you straight to prison. Eh? Is that not true? Eh? Yes, sir. You can see the mind of people. People fear their uh, people fear woman be more than their creator. You can see it today, you see a Muslim woman. Before you, if you see a Muslim woman, whether in Europe or outside Europe, before nobody will tell you that this is a Muslim woman. Is that not true? Eh? Yes. But yes, how can you identify our sister with prostitutes today? I use that word. How can you identify the pastor's wife and those that are in the crop? How can you identify them? Can you answer me today? No more, no more. There is no way you can identify them. A prostitute pray, a pastor wife pray, a prostitute speak tongue, you speak tongue, a prostitute fish with one, you fish with one, a prostitute carry Bible, you carry Bible, even which crap, which they, they fast, and you, you are fasting, a prostitute are fasting. You are wearing trousers, they are wearing trousers. You are wearing makeup, the makeup. What is the difference? Hello, sir. What is the difference? No difference, sir. No difference? Therefore, no. I want to tell you that we have, a, if I can, I want to refer you to a lot of Bible. Are you hearing me? There is a Bible, there is a Bible that condemns all those things. Let me, I want to allow Brother David to, uh, to talk before I will take you to a lot of, I want to take you to a lot of places in the Bible. And before I will not come to the area of a woman hair you are carrying, to tell you that woman hair, I will tell you what is behind that woman head you are carrying, you are putting on your head. Okay, sir, sir, I have just one minute. Oh. Let me say something, one minute. Please, can you just hold on first? Let a brother David, on a brother David is online. Can he, please, let him, let him say something before you will talk, please. Okay? Hey, good afternoon, children of God. Good afternoon, brother David. You are welcome. Please tell us where you are calling from, please. I, I, my name is brother David. I'm calling from Italy here in Milano. God bless you for joining us. I, I, I'm a member and also a worker, also a God servant in Church of God Mission. Actually, the God bless aspect you. of Chosa, or let me use the aspect of garment, growth. We check the scripture very well. Let's start like this. We have God, we have government, we have man. God is the foundation of all. God created man. And the man decided to set up a government. And the government set up a policy. 
And God has a prescription, a commandment, a word, a statement that he has given to us to follow. God created the body, the spirit, the soul. But I found a majority of Christians, they are not consigned of their body. Are we together? Yes. When you look at the scripture, the Bible says our body is the temple of God. A book of first collision. When we talk about temple, what do we mean? We mean a place that God dwells. Notice today that the Holy Spirit is not the life of a Christian. Why? Because it is holy. The Holy Spirit is stay in a body that is holy. How can somebody expose his part of the body? How can the, the Bible say in the book of Deuteronomy where you read that a woman should not put on what is permitted to a man? And we look at the book of Exodus 28, verse 2. There is um, an event that takes place there in the Old Testament. You know, many people will come out one day, it's not in the Old Testament, it's not in the New Testament. They are all lying. They don't understand the Bible. Let's see here, Exodus 28. I want somebody to read for me, I will be very glad. Exodus 28, verse 2. Exodus 28, verse 2. Yes, sir. And thou shalt make holy garments for Aaron, thy brother, for glory and for beauty. Sir, so, dude, are we together? Holy garment is what the Bible was talking about. Holy garment, it is what can produce glory and beauty. I, I, I have been here in almost two years. I am not really so engaged. And you see the glory of God in his life. Without not asking him a question, are you a Christian? Why? Because of the way he dressed, they will go to church. Ah, I don't really know what I'm saying. It's an abomination. But, in the sight of God. God bless you. Any gay, it's an it's real, it's real abomination in the sight of God. God. God bless you, brother David. God bless any you. Any gay that, make, that can make, I want to call to show, any gay that can make up his mind to be wearing stage, the way that have nothing to do with him or her, her if he made up his mind to be putting no threat in this land, the way that have nothing to do with her, because there is no excuse for her fire. Her fire is rain, and heaven is rain. And God will judge us according to our work. God he bless, the body is God bless you. He that destroys the body, it shall be destroyed by God Almighty. God bless you. That sister that don't give her life to Christ, I'm very impressed. I would even like to speak to that sister. What a nice salvation. I'm full with joy today. And I also believe there's joy in heaven. God bless you. Really, I'm really happy. Thank you, sir. God bless you. We'll God bless talk. you. God bless we'll you. Over, we'll talk to God bless you. Um, thank you. Thank you. you thank can you. hear our brother. Um, I want to thank God for that. Before I will allow you to talk, I want you to know that um, God cannot do paradise with his standard. God have a standard that he expected for all his children to maintain. And anybody that jeopardized with that standard, that person could have been better the person was not born. For the person to be born, having the privilege to see for the truth, the person did not never take time to see for the truth. Now, I give uh, Sister Elizabeth, that was the, the, uh, she was saying something before, I want to take you to the Bible and I want to make it, I want to analyze things to you that will help you to go and put, you know, to help you, the thing that will help you, you will put fire by yourself to say, we won't go to, we won't, for me to go to hell, it's better these thousands of arrow I spend on woman hair to destroy them. Please, Sister Elizabeth, are you with us? Yes, sir. Please go ahead. You was about to say something. Please go ahead. Yeah, I wanted to say something because sometimes if I'm praying, I will just like, Maybe God is silent, you know. And I, I've read a lot of verses in Bible where the Bible said, and prayer of a sinner is an abomination, and, and the wages of sin is dead. And because I've asked many pastors this, this similar question, no one, I, I don't know, I don't think they have given me the right full question, the answers. The Bible says, do not sin against the Holy Spirit. That is the only sin that will never forgive you. And sometimes I will like, how will someone, I, 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 is it that I've, I've 
offended the Holy Spirit. That is why I'm praying every year to year. I pray uh, my situation still remains the same. I've asked many pastors, how I can someone who sin against the Holy Spirit? I want to know. Okay, fine. But let's let's first of all finish the question before we let us not have a lot of questions. Let's yeah, address. Actually, we'll have to. Yes, I we want we the by God's grace, I'm going to take time. The ones we can able to answer today, if if uh, no time, we postpone them again to the next uh, question and answer. I want us to address the question proper. Let's yes, let's uh, think. And, uh, I, in my school, sir, in my school, I have Muslim friends. They they put on very long garments, but if you put their garment up, they are wearing trousers. I ask them, but you people always deceive. We, 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 we Christians believe that you guys, you people are wearing long garments. People always like, oh, look at Muslim. They you people dress their yeah, corporate dress in in in, in this same way. Uh, you know, how can they dress like garments without trousers? Don't you see that it's cold? Yeah, let, you know, Sister Elizabeth, you? hold on first, please. Let's go to the let's answer. We don't do competition with people. We have a standard, whether Muslim or no Muslim. We have a standard that we are maintaining. Please, I want us to go to the Bible. In the book of First Peter, chapter 3. No, let's first of all go to the our sister mentioned Revelation, chapter 21, verse 8. Let's go there. Revelation, chapter 21, verse 8. Are we there? 21, verse 8. Yes. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable, and murderers, and warmongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the, in the lake which burnet with fire and brimstone, okay. which is the second death. Okay, that is where our sister said we should go and read, for you must to know the standard one, the standard God request for us in First Peter chapter 3. Let's read something there. First Peter, the Bible is true. Open your Bible so that uh, you can. First, uh, First Peter, chapter three. Are we there? Yes. Sir. First Peter, chapter three. Let's take it from verse, uh, from verse. Um, yeah. Let's take it for. Let's start from verse one so that we can understand it to verse four. Likewise, your wives. Be in subjection. Be in subjection to your own husband, that if any obey not the word, that they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives. Verse two. Why they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear, whose adorning let it not be that at let. Let it not be that outward adorning of plating the hair, of weaving, of wearing of gold, sorry, or of putting on of apparel, but let it be the hidden man of the heart, in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. Praise God. Okay. Amen. Hallelujah. I believe you. I believe you read with us. You hear what the Bible is telling us there. Am I right? That there is a there is what God expected for every woman. Please, there is a noise there. Please, there is a noise. Please, please, on Zoom, there is a noise. Please, there is what God expected for women. Women must dress proper, putting on the holy garment, not the way the world is dressing today. Women must dress different, the women of God. Our sisters all over the world, our sisters, I'm being with my sister, one of my sisters, we are, we are living together for years, up to today. That sister, I have never seen her wearing, wearing trousers. She don't have trousers. All our sisters in our church, that really is a real sister of the watchman, whether cool or no cool, we have a standard. Whether outside or no outside, not even only the time of church. My brothers and sisters, if you really know the danger of her, 
You can see how I'm sweating right now. You see how I'm sweating, I'm cleaning it. But in her, there is no handkerchief in her. In her, there is no drop of water in her. Therefore, I don't see, I don't see anything that will make you to dress like the children of rebellion. The devil has brandfold the people's eyes today. To see Troza, let me tell you, when this, our sister was talking, the Holy Spirit made me to understand something that in the time of in the time the Troza, the Troza beginning, and the time came, somebody a time came, they said, Ah, this one can also be good for a woman. Let us make the other one for a woman. That is how the Troza begin. That is how they made Troza. Friend, and the time came, the women begin, I can remember years ago, years ago, when my sister was going to church. I tell you that all these trousers, we, my sister cannot go to even buy a trouser and bring it into the house, not to talk of to wear it. Friends, but today a time came, the church begin to, the church begin to see all those things as anything. But glory be to God that are still some churches that are still saying no. This thing is not what is not true. Friends, I want to tell you as a godly sister, you are not permitted to what to put on trouser. Our sister asked you a question. You have a you, the spirit of God is in you, just as you told me before, that as you as you wear that trouser, as you went to go and buy that trouser. The spirit of God begin to condemn that trouser. That is the spirit of that is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is in you. I tell you, there is a day I dress, I move out to go to evangelism, and I wear polo on that day. As I as I, as I reach evangelism, the Holy Spirit begin to tell me, look at yourself. The Holy Spirit begin to condemn me. You know that day I couldn't, I could not go to stand to preach. And I, the place, it was 30 minutes driving. I have to return back home. That day, I didn't go to evangelism. Why? Because the Spirit of God is inside me. Nobody, we don't force anybody. First and foremost, look at it. First and foremost, the first thing you need, you need, you need a genuine salvation. That is why the Bible said, if any man be in Christ, what happened? He is a new creature. Behold. All things are passed away, all things become new. When you become a born again, the Holy Spirit will begin to direct you. You don't do eye service, you don't do it because of other people have removed their trouser. You want to remove your trouser? No, you will have a great conviction inside you. The Holy Spirit will now begin to direct you of what you should wear and of what you should not put on. Why? Because now the holy spirit have come inside their body the spirit of god remember god is holy am i right god is holy the day you accepted christ as your personal lord and savior what happened it, it will not come inside you it will not come inside you and live in you but now i want to take you to the bible in first let's read a place in the bible let's read a place in the bible first peter chapter one let's read something there First Peter chapter 1 verse 14. First Peter chapter 1 verse 14 says something. It says, as obedient children, not fashioning yourself according to the former laws in what? In your ignorance. Am I right? Am I right? Eh? That is the word. Now as you have accepted Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, don't go back again and begin to fashion yourself. Those things you used to do to paint your mouth. Those things you used to do to paint or to change your hair. Those things you used to do to change your color. Do not go back again because you are no longer ignorant anymore. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Are we are we getting it now? Are we getting the answer? Yes, sir. Eh? Good. Yes, sir. Now, as a child of God, as a daughter of Zion, you are no longer permitted. Say, as now obedient child, 
not fashioning yourself according to the former laws in your world, in your ignorance. Look at verse 15. We have two types of holiness. Number one, please let there be no noise. Number one, the day you accepted Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, that day instantly the Holy Spirit come inside you. That is the first one. Holiness. The second one is, is what I'm going to show you now in verse 15. Let us read in verse 15. First Peter chapter 1, verse 15. It says, But as he which have called you is holy, so be ye holy in what? In all manner of your conversation. That you are chatting with somebody, everything you are chatting is what? Holiness. You are talking of what? Everything is what? Is holiness. Be what? Because, but as he which have called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of your conversation. You go to offices to, 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 to do something, everything you are saying is holy. In secret, holy. In public, holy. That is the second one. Friend, but today people are being ignorant of the word of God. Now I want to come in verse 16. It says, Because it is written, Be ye holy for what? For I am holy. Now we confirm, we confirm the word of God in the book of Romans. Turn with me in Romans. Romans chapter 12. Let's read something there. Romans. Let's see what the Bible has to tell us there. Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. It said, Brethren, I beseech you, we are for brethren, by what? By the mercy of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto who? Unto God. Which what? Which is your reasonable service. Mark that word. Brethren, I beseech you, by the mercy of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice. A living sacrifice, holy, that you don't need to put anything unclean in your body. Holy, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable serv uh, 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 service. That is the only service that what that priest to God, that you keep your body holy, that you live your body as natural as God created you. You know that when God created us, God created us with what? With his own image and what? And likeness. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I believe the person that asked this question, I hope all of you that move your phone, you are, you are following this program. Are we following this program? Yes, sir. Eh? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, you know that, thank God, you know that God is the one that created us. He created us with his own image and likeness. Therefore, he is the best architect. There is no any architect like, the, like God himself. What God expected for us, that we should give him what? That we should give him, how? We should give him the sacrifice of holiness. This is the reasonable service before God. And in verse 2, he said, And be not conformed to what? To this world, but what? But be ye transformed by the renewal of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and what an acceptable and perfect will of God. Friends, man, that word, the scripture is what is true. He said, Be not conformed to this world, but today the pastors are conformed, the Christians are conformed, the women of God has conformed to what? To the things. To the material things of this world, to the eyelashes of this world, to the makeup of this world, to the trousers of this world. But the Lord is telling us, be not conformed to this world. All these are the things of this world. All these are the things. If you come to church, if somebody asked a question before, he said, But why isn't that uh, in church you find women, women they are much more than we more than men in, in church? But in heaven, according to them, that men are more than women in heaven. What? Why is it like that? Because there are women in church, but these women, they are not living according to the standard of God. But there are few men in church, what are they doing? When they embrace the gospel, they don't jeopardize with it. 
friend, are you still confirmed to the word? But now the Lord is telling, he said, he said, be, he said, by the renewal of your mind, that your mind must be like the mind of Christ, having the mind of Christ, that your mind must be renewed to be that, to have that, to be like the same mind that Christ have, that he may prove what is that good and what are acceptable and the perfect way of God. Praise the Lord. Let me do this illustration. Let me do this illustration that will help us. On the day of my mom's birthday, I called her. I said, Mom, after I wish my mother birthday, and my mom, I asked her, I told her something. I said, Mom, do you know that women are insulting God? Bro, sisters, do you believe that women are insulting God? I'm asking the question. Do you believe on that? Yes. I will tell you. My mom asked me, son, why? Then I do this illustration to my mom. I say, mom, what about tomorrow now God bless you with excess money? After blessing you with excess money, and uh, you look for the best attitude in the world. You tell the attitude, I don't care to know how much is going to cost me to have a to have the best home in the world and the, the attitude give you it give you the best the best out of the best the best and uh, okay i am not in the group because you people are not hearing my voice are you please you can contact me on that your whatsapp Please, otherwise on the on the Zoom, because I'm not seeing you, please. Sister Ruth, Sister Ruth, please contact me either on WhatsApp or on the was on Zoom. Please, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Then, I want to ask this question to all of you now. Maybe tomorrow, God bless all of you, and then you look for the best attitude, that will give you a best home in this world. And then you give the, you hand over after the architect have done with it, he give you the key. And then that key you give to your child. Please, what do you expect for your child when you hand over the key to that child? Thank you. Eh? Thank you. Do thank you and what? To, to appreciate to appreciate you say mom i am so glad am i right yes sir. okay fine let's if paravention your child collected the key and look at you from head to toe eh? and carry caterpillar to destroy the house i'll be ungrateful eh? ungrateful child ungrateful child am i right Yes, sir. The same way that you are ungrateful child, when the building God has created, which is you, remember the Bible said you are the temple of God. Am I right? Eh? Yes, you are ungrateful child. When you go to market and buy woman hair and put on your hair, you are insulting God. When you go to market and buy and buy eyelashes, you are ungrateful child. Do you know what you are saying? Eh? You are telling God. Lord, you made a mistake. You didn't give me long. You give you, you this eyelashes. It is not good. Lord, you made a mistake that this head you gave me is too short. Supposed to give me blue. You supposed to give me red. Yes, tomorrow. You you supposed to give me long one. God that created you is the one that created white woman. Am I right? He gave you a bright beauty because He knows what is good for you. And now you are now telling God, Lord, you didn't create me well. You are ungrateful person. Do you say that? Eh? Do you see that? And I tell you that such a person will go and pay for it. Just as you are not happy with your child, the same way God is not happy with us. When God is seeing that the building that he created by himself, friend, when God created everything finished, eh? Do you know what happened? He said, he said, now nah, let's create it. Let us create man with what? With our own image and what? And likeness. He didn't created woman be the same spirit he created animal. Do you see that? 
He said, let's create, the, let's create human be with our own image and likeness. Now that God has created, he is the perfect architect. And he has designed the building. Do you know what you are saying now? You are now telling him, Lord, this building, you made a mistake. You didn't give me, you're supposed to give me makeup. You're supposed to make my mouth red. You make my mouth black. It's an insult. You are insult. I want to own the video on Zoom so that you will focus on me and look at my uh, and look at my explanation. Friends, you are insulting God. You are telling God, Lord, you made a mistake. The day you carry, you carry, listen, look at me. The day you carry Miriam, you begin to paint your mouth. You are saying, Lord, this thing, this mouth, you didn't create it well. Friend, you can't insult God and go free. Do you hear what I said? Eh? Do you hear me? Praise the Lord. Please, there is there is a child there disturbing. Please, let that child stop. Please. There is a noise on Zoom. Please. Friends, I want to tell you, the day you went to, you see here, your ear, eh? your ear. When God created your ear, God didn't put hole here. Am I right? Am I right? Did God put hole here? No. But he put mouth, he put mouth here. He put hole here. He put hole here. But here, he didn't put hole here. You, the day you carry me to, to chuck it, you know what you are doing? You are telling God, you made a mistake, Lord, you're supposed to put over here. You are insulting God. Friend, you will not go free for it. Don't be deceived. They will tell you, if you don't put her over here, how can you identify that that child is a girl? Friend, is that how to identify it? No. If you if a girl put on a, a, a skirt, Somebody that see, see anybody that saw that ch child will know that this child is what is a girl. Let us not be deceived by what is happening in the world. I want you to know the woman hair you are carrying put on your hair. Do you know what? Do you know how they are doing it? Go and check. All those are the things they sacrifice to idol in India. I want to tell you that those things were those things has been initiated in the kingdom of Jezebel. The makeup you are using, eh? the makeup, those things are being produced in the spiritual way. Those things are being manufactured by what? By blood. By blood. I'm telling you the truth. In, in spirit, I'm talking in spiritual way now. Not in physical. You are seeing it in physical. But in spiritual way, I'm telling you how those things have been manufactured. They are being produced by what? By blood. To destroy the world. Those things has been controlled by Jezebel. Go and check the Bible as a whole. From Genesis to Revelation, the only woman that make up in the Bible is only Jezebel. Jezebel. Only Jezebel. But today, many pastors' wives are now what? Are now saying make up are nothing. Pastors are not saying make up are nothing. Friend, I want to tell you if really heaven is your goal. Either you choose makeup or you choose heaven. Either you choose woman hair or you choose heaven. It is your business. Are you hearing me? If you want to go to hell, it is what? It is your business. If you want to go to heaven, it is your business. But I will tell you the truth. As a true child of God, that have really come out of darkness. Eh? That the, remember the Bible tells us in the book of uh, Second Corinthians, Second Corinthians, hear what the Bible said in Second Corinthians chapter in Second Corinthians chapter six. The Bible tells us something there. Second Second Corinthians chapter six verse uh, verse sixteen. It says, "And what agreement has the temple of God with I do? All those things you are putting on your body, they are I do. Do you hear what I said? Eh? All those artificial things are what they are." I do. The Lord don't want to see all those things. Look at it. He said, and what agreement has the temple of God with I do? There is a question mark there. For ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and I will walk in them and I will be their God and they shall be my people. Look at verse 17. He said, wherefore, come out for among them, my daughters. Come out for among them. And what? And be ye separate, said the Lord, and touch not unclean 
things, all those things we want, all those things make up, they are unclean yeah. things. They are what? They are unclean things. And the Lord don't want to see all those things with us. Because we are holy children and be separated away from the world. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. He said, wherefore, come out from among them and be what? And be ye separate. Say the Lord and touch not on green things. I will receive you. Look at verse 18. And I will be a father unto you. And ye shall be my sons and what? And daughter. Say the Lord Almighty. The only way you can become sons and daughters of God is that you keep, you have keep his law. You love him for who he is. Are you seeing it? You love him because you know he is the owner of your life. You love him because you know he's the one that created you. You love him because you know that he's the source of your life. You love him because he, you know that without him you have no life. Friend, if the person that created me, that gave me life, eh, the person is telling me, now, nah, but lo me, I design you like this. I want you to remain like this. I will not tell the person, no, this color, you are this color used to paint me. This color, no, it's not good. I need to change the color. I am he is the owner of my, my life. Do you see? Do you see the wisdom of people? Eh? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Sister, have you got the answer? Eh? Yes, sir. Sister, are you okay with your answer? <laughs> yes, sir. Have you convinced now that those things is not acceptable as a child of God? Yes, sir. Glory be to God. Now, we now come, we now come to the question our sister Sister Precious from Germany, your uh, your question. We want to answer your question now before any other thing. Don't think that I forgot your question. No. The sister asked a question. Whether we are not English. Let me use the word. Use the word that, the word of English, which is, let me analyze it to the 21st century. Now the people are saying we are in 21st century. That 21 century that you are free, you are under grace, you are not under law, you are under grace. But the Bible have what the Bible have what the Bible have what the Bible what can we go to our Bible to see what is written? Can we continue in sin? That may grace, grace may abide. Romans 6. What, what happened there? Can we continue in sin? That grace may abide. Mm -hmm. eh? Are we there? Romans 6, chapter 1 and 2. Are we there? Romans 1, Romans chapter 6. We take it for 1 to 3 now. Are we there? What, sh what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that that are dead to sin live any longer daily? Verse 3. Know ye not that so many of us as we are baptized into Jesus Christ, we are baptized into his death. Do you see that? Uh, give me a scripture that says, Whosoever is joined to Harlot is of the Harlot. Um, uh, in, Rome, in the same Roman, I want you to know that we say, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abide? He said, God forbid. Man, that word, God forbid. That you remember Jesus, who can tell us? Can you tell us the old, uh, the age of God? Who can tell us the age of God? God is ageless. Eh? <laughs> He's ageless. God is ageless. Nobody know his age. <laughs> Nobody know what? Know his age. Therefore, is the same God 
Abraham serve. They say God, Isaac serve. They say God, Jacob serve. They say God, Paul and Peter, Paul and Salah, James. All this he says, they say God, they serve. Is the same God we are serving today? The same Bible is still the same Bible. The Bible have not changed. Therefore, whether 21 century or 20, 29 century or 2010 century or any century you call it, is the same standard God expected for us. God don't want to see we deviate away from His standard. Let us not deceive those people that are saying that you cannot live. You can, don't you know that uh, we are in a different uh, uh, century? Don't join them. Don't associate with them. Don't follow them. Don't be with them. They are Antichrist people. They are not of God. Friends, I want to tell you. Anybody did they I jeopardize with this with the uh, with the standard Italian government expected for me? Do you know what they did to me? They sent me to prison. I pay for it. But now somebody is now telling you when you not when you not live contrary to the standard God expected for you that there is no punishment. There is no punishment. God give you God give you a a a, a, a time. To repent. But when you now fail to repent, I want to tell you when you cross this earth and read the final bridge, then you will not face the judgment. When you not really face the judgment, you will not know. Ignorance of not knowing the Bible will not be an excuse on, on that judgment. That my pastor didn't tell me the truth will not be an es excuse. People will tell you, how can God send this whole world to hell? Friend, Hair is very large. Hair is very large. If the whole world decided not to go to heaven, it does not change anything from God. If the whole world decided not to go to heaven, friend, if God did not spare the angel that sin, the archangel, which is the Lucifer, if God didn't spare the angel that sin, and you are not saying right now, God will not spare the general overseer. That didn't preach the truth. You will not tell me God will not spare the Pope. If Pope failed to preach the truth. You will not tell me God will not look at you. That you are. Do you know that God is not your uncle? Do you know that? God is not for your village. It's not Igbo. It's not Yoruba. Neither is in, uh, is in Italia. It's not a Jemima. man. Friend. Don't be, don't be bland. Don't be bland to the gospel. If those people, they are preaching rubbish, telling you, you can live as you like, you follow them, you know who you are. Mumu plus Mumu equals to Mumu. But I want to tell you, don't let Mumu follow you. Is it time to buy the truth and sell it not? Stand on the truth. Stand on the truth. In Europe, Asa Europe, Asia, America, where you are, Africa, Nigeria, anywhere you are, stand on the truth. I tell you the truth. Don't join them. We are in 21 century, but we are not in 21 century. Why? Because the Bible tells us in the world, but what? But not on the world. We are Christians are in the world, but we are not on the world. Why will you join them? Christians are living at I don't care today. It doesn't matter. That word, it doesn't matter. Have sent multitude to her and is still going to send multitude to her. But I pray that you will not be among them. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. God understand. God, is it really true? God understand that. God does not understand sin. That language, that language, that is it. That language, underline that language. It doesn't matter. Underline it. And run for it. I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. I believe that uh, we have got our answers. Sister, I promise I believe you have got your answer. Praise the Lord. Any other question or we close now?
Yes, I like the singing against the Holy Spirit, sir. Okay. Uh, a sister talk of a sin against the Holy Spirit. Sin against the Holy Spirit. Okay. <laughs> sin against the Holy Spirit. Hold up, uh, somebody is, uh, is talking to us on the... No, I want to ask this. Okay, okay, sister, okay. Okay, hold on first. I, want. I believe somebody wants to reach us on the WhatsApp. Yes, good evening, sister. God bless you. God bless you. You are welcome, and we are grateful to God to have you on this program this evening. Yeah, God bless you. Yes. Yes. Um, we, you, you have a question or contribution? Yeah, you talk about uh, how we can live holiness as a child of God. Yes. Hello, sir. Yes, I'm with you. you talk, okay, you talk about how we can, how we can live uh, holiness as a child of God. That is right. You are try, sir, and I pray that Almighty God will empower you, give you more grace Amen. to speak the truth. Because it's not it's not really easy for you, uh, before you see somebody that will speak the truth. Because uh, they believe that uh, we are under grace; you can do anything. And uh, as far as uh, the blood of Jesus Christ already covered us, it's not can't. You understand? Yeah. And they believe that uh, it's not can't, but uh, I thank God for your life, for you open our eyes, for we to know that what is right and what is good, because in small churches, it's really hard before you see pastors preaching all these things, you understand, especially uh, concerning the eyelashes, the makeup, as a woman, it's very difficult, but when you know where you are going to, you have to let go. You have to let all those things go because uh, you have to because we we normally satisfy our flesh and we neglect our spirit. Okay. You understand? Yes. And uh, I pray that uh, all people will give us the power for we to do it. We. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want to, I want to bless God for your life, and I want to tell you, why did God allow you to see us? Because God care for you. God think about you. God don't want to lose you. I know the country where you are. I know the people out there, they have turned the gospel upside down. And I know what is happening in that country. That is a country where all those people that are, that are into prostitute will tell pastor when they will open church. And the pastor will follow them. They are the one telling pastor, the church should start by 2 o'clock. And the pastor believe. Pastor said, no problem. Why? Because they are the one paying the church rent. They have, got, they have gone to night work. they gone to night work, and uh, in the morning they need to sleep. They will tell pastor, so so time like this church will open. Pastor will say, okay. And that is the time the church will open. <laughs> but I want to tell you, if not the mercy of God, if not the love of God, God wants to make you to be a different woman out of the midst of multitude. Why? Because God is not, God does not have pressure in any soul that go to hell. You can be in church for yeah. 30 years, but you are adamant. You don't know anything. But when you now reach, when you now reach the final junction, you will find out that you have been in church, you have given your money to pastor, but you are not a born again. How can you be born again when you have, when you have not been taught about born again? I want to tell you, we talk uh, some other time. Let me first of all answer some questions. God bless you. And uh, you can join us okay, on the Facebook. You can join us on Facebook or Zuna if uh, so that the people that people that want to call on the WhatsApp so that they can call. God bless you. Um, okay, okay then. A sister. Okay, so God bless you. Somebody is asking another question. He said, "Sir, please, sir, please, is it right for a pastors to have private uh, jets?" That is another question. We are going to first of all. Eh? Yeah? Yes, we are going to take a, we are going to take the question uh if the question the sister asked about uh, about the Holy Spirit. Uh what was your question? Your question is that uh, what was that question, please? 
How can someone sin against the Holy Spirit? Okay. How can someone how can someone sin against the Holy Spirit? Okay. How can someone sin? Eternal sins. How can someone sin against the Holy Spirit? My brothers and sisters, let's go to the Bible. Or does somebody have the answer to that before we before I continue? Eh? Mm, I think sin against the Holy Spirit is like what I also know in in like this kind of question that when maybe somebody you you are in church with you are praying, let's say somebody is speaking in tongues. And you, because you are not speaking in tongues, you are condemning that person. You don't know if you are condemning that person like this person, this tongue, I don't think, maybe it's speaking devilish tongue. So I, I understand that when you condemn the, the tongue that somebody is speaking, that you are lying, uh, uh, you are sinning against the Holy Spirit. And all that thing also, Mostly fornication, it makes the Holy Spirit to run away from you. That one, it kills Holy Spirit a lot because that thing has happened to me. But even one month, I didn't get my, I see something left me. Since that time, I, I can't regain myself. I was crying, begging God in the night, please, what is it? I don't understand because I know I committed things. And then I was praying, 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 praying. One month, almost one month, before I can regain my sense, I was really broken. So the thing of fornication, is when you fornicate, you can drive the Holy Spirit. You sin against him, it, it, it can depart from you. Until maybe you change, you are really broken with time, you can regain it. But condemning someone, speaking in tongues also, Blessing. it condemns. The Holy Spirit. So that's what I can be able to say. So you can okay, God, God bless you. Now, we go to the Bible. The Holy Spirit does not forgive sin. Yes, that's what I'm saying. There's no forgiveness when you sin against the Holy Spirit. That is a sin. God the Father, God the Son can forgive. But the God of the Holy, the Holy Spirit does not does forgive, not forgive sin. Then you can see today. The people come to church. The pastor will say right now, oh yeah, everybody be speaking tongues. <laughs> Begin to speak. Friend, I told you time ago there are people that came to my house. That they, they, they said that uh, these people, they said, sir, we know your passion about God. We, we want to visit you. And these people came to my house. And uh, one of them said, let's pray. Before we, we dismiss we dismiss the meeting. One said, now we are going to start with tongue. The other one said, no, we are going to we just worship God. Then as we was worship God, it we, it's not up to one minute. What I hear, this one will say, the other one will say, koto 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 koto. I will say, blood of Jesus, cover me. Blood of Jesus, cover me. I open my eye. I didn't close my eye. I open my eye. Blood of Jesus, cover me. Blood of Jesus, cover me because I don't know what they are saying. Blood of Jesus, cover me. I because I don't want somebody to initiate me. Blood of Jesus, cover me. Blood of, inside my heart. I hold my heart. Blood of Jesus, save me. Blood of, because, friend, you need to be careful. You don't understand. <laughs> you need to be careful. I, I, after that, after that, I hope I didn't close my eyes. They was praying. Listen to me. All those things will not be ignorant on the last day. You will reap what you sow. The Holy Spirit does not forgive. Let's read. In the book of uh, Mark, chapter 3. Let's read the Bible. Mark, chapter 3, verse 28 to 29. Mark, chapter 3. Are we there? Mark chapter 3. Are we there? Nobody's there. That's what, sir. Mark chapter 3, 28 to 29. Sister Promise is reading. 
that. Okay. Verily I say unto you, all sins shall be forgiven unto the sons of men, and blasphemies wherewith so ever they shall blaspheme. But he that shall blaspheme against the Holy Ghost had never forgiveness, but is in danger of eternal damnation. Man, that word, you go to church now, they tell you, begin to speak to you, you open your mouth, you don't know what, you don't know what you are doing. What are you doing? You are blaspheming the Holy Ghost. Holy Spirit does not speak to you. He said, oh, say the Lord. Holy Spirit just speak to me now. Friend, ah, Holy Spirit said I should tell you, woman, yes, it's your mother in law that is troubling you. Now, what you need to do, the Holy Spirit said I should go to river. Now you need to pay 1,000 euro. All these are blasphemy of the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Spirit tossed the Lord when the Lord has not spoken. Eh? Friend? All these awards are the are blaspheme of the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Spirit will not forgive such person. You must be very, very careful. Friend, before I will tell somebody that the Lord speak to me to tell you something, I will have confirmation. Friends, you need to be very, very careful. As our sister said, the, the thing that pursue the Holy Spirit, the greatest sin that pursue Holy Spirit is this sin of immorality. You need to understand that the day you accepted Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, what happened now? He will now send the Holy Spirit to come inside you. That Holy Spirit, but the sin you can sin, you can fornicate. After you are fornicate, you realize. I tell you, if your if the spirit of God that is in you is 80 or 90, instantly it will run down. You hear me? Maybe it takes you years for you to acquire it, but instantly it will run away from you. I don't know. Am I communicating? Yes, sir. It will run away from you at a spot. Friend, if you pray and pray and pray and pray and pray and pray, you may you may not able anymore to recover all of, to recover the level that it was with you. You may not able. You may not able to what? To have that same level you was operating before. Do you see that? Eh? The reason why Christians should not offend the Holy Ghost because Holy Spirit does not forgive. We must be very, very careful. If we are not careful, you may think that you are a Christian, you have offended the person you don't supposed to offend. And that will now become an error. That will not become an error. No, we know what happened to uh, Ananias and Sapphira. Yes. We lied to the Holy Ghost in the book of Acts, chapter 5. If you read down, you will see what happened there when they lied to the Holy Ghost. Immediately, they died. Ananias yes. And his wife, Sapphira. Yes. On, on, on that one is another one. And also, also, if the Holy Spirit is not talking to you, and now you neglected it, you neglected it, the Lord is bringing message to you, the Lord is telling you, repent for your sin, and when the Lord is not talking to you, just like a time ago, the Lord, there is a something the Lord asked me to do in when I was in Nigeria. There is a, this great sacrifice the Lord asked me to do. But do you know, on that first time that I hear the voice, I close my ear. It's not that I really hear it. I hear the voice clear. But because of the mercy he has for me, friend, the way God used to deal with, uh, follow me, it may not be the same way with you. Do you hear me? Eh? Do you hear me? After two, after two weeks again, do you know what he told me? He said, son, 
simply mean now nah, if i'm not talking to you you don't listen to me hey i say i'm in trouble lord forgive me i have to go and obey however if we turn our back if we turn on our back on the voice of the holy spirit that one it can cause result it can cause us it can cause us not to hear from god anymore you will think that you are praying God is no longer hearing you. Yes, because he has turned his voice, he has turned his back on you. He, because he has talked to you several times, he has rebuked you several times. You are a person, you are, you are, you, 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 you argue too much. You act, you question him when he's talking to you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, the Lord, the, the Lord don't expect his children to disobey him whenever he's talking to us please there is a noise there with child please let that noise cease please it is very very important as a children of god for us not for us to do our possible best not to what not to neglect the voice of the holy spirit you need to you need to know all those things if you want god to be speaking to you listen to him and whatever he asks you to do do it and I tell you, you will see that uh, it will begin to direct you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> we, can, we can also go and read the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 12, verse 31 to 32. Luke chapter 12, verse 10. We can go and read them and then we will see all those things. Now we take... We take the other next question and we close with that question. Every other question, we postpone them. Oh, sir, of... sir. Uh, sorry, Sister Elizabeth, before I forget, because she said uh, something that uh, the one she gave some trousers to, to some people, you know. So I want us to look into that because if you, you cannot put on trousers, so there is no need for you to you know to give it to other people because it's yeah. still made the same yeah excuse excuse me even uh, the one i have in my luggage now my younger sister she's begging me to give it to her because she she, she won't stop wearing travel like that all these things are expensive but most of all these things are moschino they are designers and uh, she said i cannot trust them she wants them so, uh, she's begging me i need to give it to her if i no you will not give to her no let, let me let me come to you let me come to you let you withdraw it don't let anybody know i did that thing before i give it to my sister before and i was regretting i supposed to throw it but I please share the message invite your friend share the so, message please when i want to throw those things away my sister was telling me please so oh, if you want to throw it oh, all this your jewelry all this your makeup everything let me know me, I was laughing. The day I went to throw it, she don't know. Well, so I was so surprised. The things are in our house. Those things are in our house. Those those bags. Yeah, yeah, let me let me come to you, sister. Uh, sister, let me come no, to you. Let me let me come. Let me come. Let me. I don't want to. See. Yeah, go. Let me rush to end uh, to end that. You have a child, am I right? Yes, sir. Now, can you go and buy poison and give to your child to drink? No. Why? I know it will kill. You know, you know it will kill your child. Yes, sir. Why is it that now you decided not to wear trousers because you know that what? You know what? Eh? Okay, fine. Now, what you know? Do you know what the Bible said? Bible said, "Woe unto that man that give his neighbor a drink." Are you seeing that? Eh? Woe unto the person that a woe unto the same person who give a something you know that this thing, if you eat it, it will kill you. You give to your neighbor to eat so that the person will die and go to hell. You see what you have done? Eh? Because you have given that person poison to what? To drink. If if the trouser is good, will you give it out? No. Therefore, sister, what I as what I advise you to do, 
I want you to pray. I can remember one of our uh, sister, one of our convert, by the help of the Lord, when she decided, when she got the gospel, and she embraced the gospel, I know how much of the things that, uh, that uh, uh, she threw away. I know the cost of it. In the Bible, there are people that gave their life to Christ. And when they repented and gave up, I, there are costs of the price. I forgot the, that scripture in the in the book of Acts of Apostles. Um, in Europe, you cannot just set fire on, on your clothes. No, you no, go and put it in those B. Go and put please, them in those B. Please, I want this, sir. Just want it to, to, just want it, please. Sister, see, this kind of thing, I did this year before. All my things, I give it to my sister as I was earlier saying. I just want to say this thing. I give it to my sister because I, I was still, my eyes were still on those things before. I don't want to throw them. I tell my sister, I'll take everything. Do you know when flesh have not yet died? I was still smart. I was say, oh, I should have fixed her now. Oh, I don't have Yvonne again. Small small was telling my sister, can you give me one uh, some from that Yvonne? This is something I said I don't want. I give it to her. My sister said, I know you will come back and ask for it again. Hey. I started fixing Again. So no, later they collected everything from her. She gave them back to me. I was using it. But later when the message really touched me, I wept, I begged God. I packed the rest thing. The day I throw it away, my sister didn't know. So if those things are still with your sister, you are you are just coming. You will see something will draw you back. You will still go and be wearing those things. I'm telling you. If you are really converted, that yes, I don't want to wear those things. Don't look onto the moon. Everybody that are here, many of us have expensive things that we throw away. So you have to get those things and you throw it yourself. You can stay with your sister, yourself, with time because you are just coming. This thing, it takes the grace of God to stand firm. Since you are just a new convert, I pray God will begin to walk in you. If not, when it's with your sister, you will still go back and be collecting this small small, be wearing them back again. So you have to look for a way how you will get those things ahead with time and throw them away. But still ask God, still put things in prayer, still give yourself to God, tell God to help you. That Amen. is it. Praise the Thank Lord. You. God bless you. God bless you. Okay, Thank some, you somebody. For your contribution. Thank you so much. God bless Thanks, you. God. I believe somebody is calling from London. Just a moment. okay, okay. Let's uh, um, we bless God for that uh, answer, and uh, I believe we are going to stop here. That uh, sister that asked that question, that sister that asked that question of uh, Jet, I believe that your question should be the next, uh, uh, will be, will be the, the first question of the next uh, program because of uh, we are returning back uh, to the night vision. Because of that, I believe we should stop here at the time we have already taken the time so that we can have a, a little rest before we return back to the night vigil today by 12 midnight because it's going to be wonderful tonight. Um, uh, we need to close here. We need to close here. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please, that sister that asked that question, please, I don't know whether it's a sister or a brother, please don't be offended. Uh, the next uh, question, we take that question on Friday because on Wednesday on Wednesday by 6 p.m. I want all of us to be on zoom by 6 p.m. That is a V that is a that is a message I need to pass to the parents especially if you are parents that is a message you need to hear by 6 p.m. I'm going to do everything possible to make sure that uh, that uh, message is on I want you to listen to what is happening in the world so that many of us today we are pursuing arrow we are pursuing dollars we are pursuing pants Monda our children. But this message will help you on Wednesday by 6 p.m. dot. The message is going to be on. I want you to listen to that information that will sustain you so that you will not leave your children to the world. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let us begin to bow down our head. You that are out there, you share the message. You share the message to your friends. Bow down your head now. Begin to thank God. For how God opened our eyes this evening. 
Let's begin to appreciate God. Let's begin to appreciate God. Let's begin to thank God. Let's thank Him for His mercy. Let's thank God for how He opened our eyes this evening. For how He opened our eyes to see the truth and see the error that are in the world today. Begin to appreciate this God. Father, we thank you this evening. We appreciate you, Father, for such a wonderful time like this. You have given us such a privilege to come like this. Lord, my Father, to look into the error today that are in the church. Father, we have seen the error that have killed a lot of people today. Father, I want to bless you. Because you don't want us to die in the same error. That is the reason why you prepare such a time like this. To open our eyes. To see the truth. Father, we have seen it. Lord, I pray, my Father, that you will show us your mercy. Show us your kindness. I pray, Heavenly Father, in glory, that we will not die on inglory. Help us, eternal Father, Lord, to live according to the message we have received. Mercy from Father, those your children, Lord, my Father, I see having set up property with them inside wardrobe. Father, help them for them to give up. Those Christians that are out there, still holding back with own eyelashes, makeup, Lord, those things they call jewelries, Lord, my Father, those things they call trouser, Father, help them to give up. Lord, open their eyes of understanding for them to see the emptiness that are in this world, for them to see that all those things are from the pit of hell. Oh, merciful Father, I pray, my Father, that this every, Lord, let him be a every of joy. As I'm leaving your children, I pray that no man or woman on this program this evening, Satan will take possession of them, none of them. Father, I set them free from every evil chain that Satan has used to chain them. Chain them to the things of this world. I pray for total freedom in the name of Jesus. Lord, every power that wants to fight against what we have had this evening, I pray, Father, you will judge those power in the name of Jesus. Lord, all the evil agent that Satan want to use to discourage us, that we Satan want to use to send us back again to eat all those things we have vomit. Father, I pray you judge them in the name of Jesus. Holy Ghost, give your children the great grace, the great grace to stand and to say no to evil. Give us the great grace, Lord, to say no, we will not return back to the war. Give us the great grace, Lord, to say no to eyelashes, to say no to immorality, to say no to trouser, to say no, my father, to worldliness. In the name of Jesus, worldliness have overtaken the, ch ch uh, the Christian today. I pray that the worldliness will not conquer us. Lord, we must conquer worldliness. Lord, worldliness, oh Lord, will not conquer us. In the name of Jesus, Lord, as on today, I pray you will give your children that passion. Father, to hate those things. Those things that does not glorify you. Those things that does not represent you in our life. Father, give us that mind to hate those things in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Lord, I pray as I'm leaving your children, I'm not leaving them alone. I hand over them to you. Lord, you said no one can draw except you draw. Father, go ahead now. Go ahead and confirm your word to your children. I have done my part. Holy Spirit, it is now your part now. Go ahead. Go ahead and convince your children. Go ahead and confirm your, to your children that this evening you are the one that speaks to them. I am not the person. Holy Ghost, go ahead and do your work that at the end, glory and honor be unto you. All those that share this message, Father, I pray you bless them. I pray, Father, in glory, as they have done your work to share the message. Father, give them the blessing that belongs to them in the name of Jesus. Those that take their time, Father, I pray as they take their time to listen to you. Bless them for all this hour they have been with you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Father. Thank you, precious Father. All those that will still listen to this message on YouTube. On Facebook, often and often, I pray, Father, they say blessing will go with them in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Adonai, for you alone is worthy to be prayed. For in Jesus' mighty name, 
we have prayed. Friends, God bless all of you and have a wonderful and blessed evening. The people on, on Facebook, the program of tonight is going to be only on the, on, on the Zoom. Endeavor to connect to the Zoom by 12 midnight. What are those things you are be facing? Have you been facing challenges of life? Before 12 midnight, you are seeing the WhatsApp number there. You can send us your prayer request on that WhatsApp. We will join you tonight to bring those matters before God. And I tell you, when we pray, on Monday is the day that I'll be set aside for that such prayer. And when we pray, heaven hear us. Believe me, join us tonight. The Lord of us is going to answer us tonight. Those problems, have you been facing miscarriage? What are the trouble you are be facing? I want to tell you, the Lord is able to put an end on those matter. As you join us tonight, your life will never remain the same. After midnight, we have the next session, the 5.30 a.m., which is the breakfast of the children of God. You join us on that, and I tell you, it's going to be wonderful by 5.30 a.m. again. As you do that, God bless you. For more information, you can visit us on www.jesusfamilyfoundation.org. Otherwise, you can contact us with the number you are seeing there. God bless you and have a blessed and wonderful evening.